Um, I've always been a spiritual person, but I was feeling, I like the ritual of coming to a familiar place with uh, kindred folks. And, uh, and he said, you know, I found this great new church. I think you'd love it. Uh, I'd like to invite you. And I said, all right. And uh, I haven't looked back. Uh, I, I think we've come out of an era where we just expected that if we were here, people would find their way to us. And uh, we still have the lingering effects of that era in people's shyness about inviting people to a worship service. Uh, things like Back to Church Sunday, I, I don't think that they've worked very well. I think people have done it very dutifully and invited the people in their lives that they could handle inviting. And uh, so they would be family members, uh, people that go to another church but happen to be visiting. And, uh, but people are very uncomfortable still from, as a holdover from that era, inviting people to a church. Do you have any thoughts on why that is? Uh, I think uh, th our culture is suspicious of organized religion. And uh, I keep uh, anticipating that that suspicion will subside a bit. And, and it is my experience that there are a lot of people that uh, they, they, they don't have that suspicion. Actually, I do invite others to St. Peter's. I'm very proud of who we are here. I'm very proud that I'm an Anglican. And I think um, if you're going to ask me what can the Anglican Church do better, I think we should be proud of who we are. Other denominations say, I'm Catholic or I'm, I'm Muslim. And, and everybody says, oh, that's interesting. Uh, as Anglicans, we are typically quite, um, quite reticent about saying who we are. And uh, I'm very, very happy to, uh, to talk about it at work if somebody's having a hard time or feeling like they don't have a home. I do tell them about my parish and my church. Um, let's see about this. He actually likes it here, but he doesn't come back. He won't come back. And I keep asking him if he's going to. Yeah, so, yeah. I think um, someone who's especially close to me, my husband, he doesn't come to church with me and that's a decision that, um, you know, we both have agreed to and that's fine. Um, and, you know, I have invited him on some occasions. Um, and you know what, it's not that the invitation isn't successful, he does come if he can, uh, but it's not necessarily long term, it's not something that he finds himself continuing to come. Um, and so that in my mind is um, you know, something that comes along with, um, with, with the faith. Some people are more drawn to it than others. Uh, but also I think with being with invitation, you have to be respectful of the person's um, right to say that, sure, I'll come, but this may not be a permanent choice for me. Well, I feel like, um, especially when talking to people that I know from school and stuff, a lot of the idea of uh, what church is, it might be a little bit... Um, I think like evangelical or something like that, but they don't think it's very inviting, right? They, they kind of might get like annoyed or something, and I feel like that's the kind of the stereotypical image of what a church might be to uh, youth. So I feel like you know, kind of a conversation starter isn't as much saying, hey, you should come, hey, you should come, but more just kind of like if the opportunity presents itself where like you can say, hey, I can tell you about my faith. This is, this is kind of a cool moment, then I feel like that might be better because it would kind of make them realize it for themselves rather than you just outwardly explaining to them you should come. Children are great at inviting people. <laughs> Never underestimate the power of children to bring parents, to bring grandparents, to bring godparents, to bring friends, uh, and pay attention to who the children are bringing. Oh, um, when I initially came here, um, I'm staying, living at a shelter, and the food's not very good. So I had a list that I'd gotten from the city, and uh, I had lived close, close to this location, so I knew the location, and I thought, all right, I'm just going to go and check, the, check out the drop-in. It's, it's free food, and, and we'll see. And um, churches generally <laughs> provide better fare than other, than other organizations. So that's how I originally came here, and um, I've forgotten the quest, the context, of the question. Did, did you find welcoming? Oh, so yes, when, yeah, um, almost immediately, I was, I was drawn in. I've definitely found many Anglican communities that I have um, 
many Anglican communities that I've that I've been a part of or that I've come to have been very welcoming and excited, partially because like I'm a young single woman coming to church, and you have um, communities that are might be elderly populations or or um, you know, people who haven't seen a lot of new people through their doors in a long time get really excited to see somebody who's really young. So the first time that I came to St. Martin's, yes, there were a lot of people who were excited and like, oh, you're new here, are you from the neighborhood? Like invitation in a welcoming sense, I think yes, like Anglicans are very welcoming. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it, well, maybe negative, but um, I do think that the Anglican tradition is one that isn't always so accessible to people. So for me, I felt very comfortable coming to an Anglican church because I had, in a way, more or less, grown up with it as a kid. So I, I kind of knew what the Anglican liturgy looked like. Um, but for one for whom that is not sort of a known thing to walk through the doors of an Anglican church and see people standing and sitting and kneeling and, and opening a book to a page that they have no idea what they're talking about um, can feel sort of exclusive. And in that some churches do a really good job of welcoming you to participate through pointing, you know, where we are in the liturgy or pointing you to page numbers or printing it all out in a pamphlet and, and um, I think some hope that you'll find, find your way a little bit more on your own and, and uh, I definitely would say that the former is a more welcoming posture um, to newcomers in the church and, and I've experienced both of those in Anglican churches. You asked earlier uh, if anyone ever said no and I, I am saddened to say that quite often when someone has said, oh, I don't have a lot of friends, I have no one to hang around with, and oh, I find it hard making these hard ethical decisions, and I think, oh, perfect, I have a place for you. When I propose church, they are extremely resistant, or else by now, because I'm sort of a natural recruiter, I'd have filled every pew in this place. So such is life in the 21st century. I mean, I throw it out there and uh, eight times out of ten I get a, a no thank you. But um, I just kind of, I talk to people and I see how they're feeling and I always offer that suggestion of why don't you come with, uh, come with us to church. You know, we love going and I talk a bit about the reasons why we love coming to St. Peter's and uh, sometimes people do come or at least they, they think about it. I think what's really astonished me is that I've had so many opportunities to talk to people about why I believe what I believe. Um, I think we, we don't do that with a recipe. I think we do that by actually listening to what the question is they have. And so sometimes people have questions about why I believe there's a God, and I'm really happy to share that with them. Sometimes they ask um, what the point of life is. Sometimes people that are at a really dark place in life, uh, struggling with some kind of big challenge. And again, that, that's, that is a little bit different answer. Um, so I think what's, what's most important is that we actually be real with people. And that we, we don't have to have all the answers even. We just have to share what we know with people in a, in a real way. That's the most compelling thing of all for people. I think it's just, it's a way to connect outside of the church as well. Um, personally, I know I invite a lot of people my age, but the people I spend time with in church are from the parish choir, so they are a great deal older than me. So I feel like I try to invite people my age or try to meet people my own age here so that we can, I can relate to them about what's going on in my outside like with my work life and my school life as well, there are things I can't really talk to as much about with people a lot older than me. I just don't feel comfortable doing that. I would say that what I'm doing, what I'm doing is I'm seeking God every time I go into a room. So it, there's a little bit of a, a, an inversion here. What I do is compared to say what a parish does when we think of invitation, because it's actually the patients and their families that are inviting me in. And so they invite me in and I accept that. Um, I have to introduce myself and say I'm here, but they have to say come in. Um, but So what I do when I'm in the hall, in my mind, I know that I'm seeking God in every single space that I go. So it's, it's rather like having God say, it's okay, you can come into this space. And, um, the things that really worked or which didn't work for me, I take those into 
how I, my philosophy, my practice. So for me, I think I'm, I'm not scared to invite people. Um, and I will, you know, I'll go up to youth on the street and invite them to our programs. Um, but I also am not attached to them coming. Um, you know, their soul is not on the line or anything like that. I just felt called to do something different, called to do something more. Um, and there was um, a man uh, at the corner of College and Young, and I remember it very, very clearly, and I probably will to the day I die. He had a mattress, and he was trying to move this mattress. And everyone was watching him because it was a bit of a spectacle. He was uh, rolling around as he's trying to move his mattress because he was a bit drunk and uh, just trying to get it from the street to the side. And it was just so sad that everyone was just kind of watching him. And I felt so like my heart was breaking for him. And I went up and I said, hey, let me help you move this mattress. If this is what you got to do, like, let's do it, right? So, uh, so we did. So we moved this mattress. And it was heavy and it was wet. <laughs> it was, and, uh, but we moved it. And, uh, and where he wanted it, he just wanted it a few feet over to the side. And so we did that. And it was on the side. And uh, he said to me, and I said, okay, we're all good, and I'll see you later. And he said, I just want you to know who helped me move this mattress. And um, I said, uh, I did, I'm Angie, and, you know, and I just kind of introduced myself. And he goes, nope, you didn't help me move the mattress. And I said, oh, okay, who did? And he said, Jesus helped me move this mattress. And uh, it uh, blew me away. It was very, uh, it just, he spoke to my soul. And it was at a time when I happened to be walking down the street thinking about my life path and thinking of what do I want to do. And uh, for that to happen at that time, I feel like it was nothing more than um, God speaking to me, to be quite honest. So I uh, came here very shortly after that, actually. Uh, stars aligned and uh, started working here a little over two years ago. And this is where I feel called to be. Um, I've actually checked in on that man and I can't find him, but, um, but I've asked around and um, he, he really truly spoke words of truth to me and invited me to be part of this community um, on the street that, that needs uh, love just like we do, right? We all need love.